नमस्कार हेलो एंड वेरी वॉम वेलकम टू सी आई टी एंड सी आर टी लाइफ फोन एंड इंटरक्टिव प्रोग्राम वेल ये स्टडे वी बिगेन विद दिस फाइव डे ऑनलाइन ट्रेनिंग ऑन गेम बेस्ड लर्निंग एंड ये स्टडेज टॉपिक वॉज गेम बेस्ड लर्निंग द पॉलिसी परस्पेक्टिव नीड एंड स्कोप एंड टूडे वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस यूज ऑफ डिजिटल गेम्स इन learning teaching and assessment so this is a 5 day training and uh, at the end of the 5th day which is on 24th of june friday a quiz will be given to you you can register yourself you can be a participant in this program in this entire online training series and uh, towards the end when the quiz will be given every detail will be given to you and uh, towards the end of this program i'll be sharing all the details that how can you participate how uh, you can know the details of this entire entire training series and uh, for now we are discussing like i said use of digital games in teaching learning and assessment if you're watching us you're watching us on pme with their channel number 6 to channel number 12 and also on our youtube channel which is ncert official if you have any questions any queries then please raise it out till 5 o'clock we have an expert in our studio and she'll be answering all your queries and uh, if you want to email us your queries the email id would be training.helpdesk@ciet.nic.in if you want to call us the number would be 8800440559 so now let me introduce you to our today's expert and she is professor indu kumar a very warm welcome to you ma'am thank you tanvi and namaskar everyone namaskar ma'am ma'am is from department of ict and training ciet ncert new delhi so let's ask ma'am uh, that uh, uh, before asking uh, and uh, beginning the use of digital games today's topic let's just uh, uh, tell you a brief review that what we did yesterday we understood what are digital games we understood what is the difference between digital games and gamification and uh, we also understood that how nep 2020 recommends game based learning and uh, one more thing uh, we went into the details we saw uh, some examples of online games digital games and uh, there are multiple digital games we all play and uh, this market is actually emerging so there are so many reasons behind it uh, before starting this uh, session on today um, so let's ask ma'am uh, the you know um, layman's definition of digital games what exactly are they and then we'll get into the details of our today's topic yeah uh, it is uh, very very important to know what is the uh, what do we understand by uh, digital games yes generally we uh, think that uh, digital games are always addictive mm. which is not the uh, case they are not always addictive it depends upon what kind of games uh, we are uh, playing mm. if they are academically oriented they lead us to immersion and there is a fine line between getting addicted to a particular thing and getting immersed to a particular experience and when it comes to uh, educational digital games they are immersive they are not uh, addictive so because they lead us to certain kind of learning they lead us to progression in learning so uh, let us come back to the uh, definition or meaning of digital game if we uh, look at this slide so any game yesterday also we discussed it but i am reiterating it again any game played using an electronic device like uh, mobile laptop desktop tablet so either online or as stand alone games are uh, termed as digital games so there is a digital divide Uh, uh, uh sorry digital device uh, which is mediated for playing a digital game so the game can be online or it can be offline then digital games provide us a virtual environment where students are not limited to physical spaces for playing a particular game it is not essential that they, they have to be a uh, face to face with each other or with their teacher in physical spaces or they have to um, have hands on in some physical learning material so learning material is digital and the game is played in virtual environment so that is about um, uh, the games. meaning of digital games there should be a device and there is a virtual environment where there is it is not necessary that student has to be 
in a physical uh, space. Space, physical. Uh, they they can be in a physical space or they uh, can be in a. Um, uh, Virtual, virtual space. space. Okay. So, uh, ma'am, enlighten us about uh, its significance, its importance. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, yesterday also we uh, discussed, touched upon this topic, yes. but uh, it is uh, very, very essential to reiterate upon the importance of uh, digital games or what is the significance of digital games in uh, education. Mm -hmm. So, let us look at the uh, slide. Uh, here, significance of digital games, and uh, here uh, are some points which are related to the significance of uh, digital games. So, if we uh, look at this uh, point, uh, you you can uh, focus upon the cursor. Individualized feedback. So, digital games gives us individualized feedback about our performance or about the attainment of learning objective with which the digital game is uh, designed. Then creative icebreakers. So digital games give us creative icebreakers. So there are students when they are in a conventional classroom situation, so it is not uh, necessary that they are very participative with the kind of learning experiences which are being given to them. But when they are playing game, they, uh, they, 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 they play a role of some kind of creative icebreaker when the students who are otherwise not very responsive in the uh, uh, classroom, they give responses and they get engaged with the game. Then improved retention because learning is intense and uh, interesting. So. Uh, they, it also lead uh, to the uh, improvement in retention of learning. Whatever students learn, it also get retained in uh, their uh, mind. Uh, so, uh, so that leads to improved uh, retention. Then boost engagement. So it also boost engagement. Uh, generally, students, uh, especially in case of school students, they find uh, learning or uh, studies very uh, boring. So they uh, tend to spend more time on uh, their uh, devices, mobile, tablet, laptop, desktop. But if they are uh, feeded with interesting educational games, so they are engaged with the device with some uh, purpose, with some positive purpose. So uh, they, uh, because the uh, digital games, educational digital games, they boost uh, engagement. So they get positively engaged with the learning. Then it also encourages collaboration. So a lot of games are such which are played in collaboration. So it also uh, uh, encourages students to uh, learn in a collaborative uh, manner. Then digital games also motivates, have a high uh, motivation factor and they motivate learners to, uh, to, uh, to, to get engaged with the learning tasks. Then trial and error. There is also an element of trial and error in the games and uh, students who are engaged with uh, digital games, they learn uh, by trial and error also and ultimately they achieve the learning objective. Then uh, better problem solving. So digital games also lead to better problem solving because uh, they are independently indulged with the learning task and that is how they solve the uh, problems which uh, comes in between attaining a learning outcome on their own and that is how uh, the, uh, they, they are engaged in better problem uh, solving. It also, uh, digital games also leads to practicing the uh, learning tasks because there are a lot of elements which make us, uh, lead us to practice. Uh, trial and error also leads us to uh, practice. We are uh, getting into a learning task, committing some errors and then we are again uh, retrying and that is how we are uh, practicing. 
So apart uh, from this, there are certain gaming uh, principles also because gaming involve additive grading. As we progress further in playing games aligned to a certain uh, content, certain um, uh, learning uh, objectives or learning outcomes. So the grading or the points are added and they are accumulated and at the end of a particular class all those points are accumulated into a, a grade. So that is the grade which a child can uh, get, get at the end of each class for uh, uh, which, which, which suggests how they uh, progressed in uh, the learning uh, task uh, while uh, playing the games which are oriented towards aligned to a learning goal. Then badges is another uh, gaming principle. So game may there are, uh, badges are also given. So badges can be some digital artifacts or images which students can collect to uh, get a feedback uh, of their learning while they were playing a game, going through uh, the uh, games which were uh, designed for them. So, badges are another element of games. Then, lead board. Lead board, if uh, we uh, have given uh, some games uh, aligned to learning uh, objectives or learning outcomes to uh, our class, if a teacher gives a class, so they can also have a lead board. Uh, lead board uh, means uh, the uh, um, the, uh, the, the list of students is given in order of their attainment of uh, points. So we can have names or we can have these lead boards without names also. We can create uh, certain symbols uh, to identify the student or student can identify themselves in the lead board and then they can understand that how many students are uh, ahead of them and uh, are, uh, where they are placed in the list of attaining a particular learning goal. So uh, lead board is another feature and which is also uh, involved in designing a game as a gaming uh, principle. Then labels, there are labels also of learning. When we progress in achieving learning outcomes, so they are uh, aligned in a manner which uh, leads us from easy uh, to complex. Uh, so, uh, likewise, uh, if we are designing games uh, aligned to uh, uh, content or learning outcome, we can have labels of those games uh, so that students get motivated to achieve another label of uh, that particular a learning task, particular content, particular concept. So uh, that is another principle of gaming which can be aligned to uh, digital educational games as well. And then there are locks also. So uh, if uh, we want, because students when we are teaching a class, teacher is teaching a class, uh, all these students learn at their own Pace. Some learn faster and some uh, learn a bit slower. It also depends upon uh, their interest in particular uh, topic. But we want students to attain a specific level uh, of learning. So we can have uh, the option of these locks until and unless a student gets a particular number of points, say for example 80 points then only a students can go on to another level. Otherwise, the another learning task, which is gamified, is locked for that student. So it ensures attainment of learning task at a specific uh, level, so uh, at a specific standard which is made. So like that, we can ensure uh, attainment of uh, learning outcomes by involving all these gaming principles with the games we have designed for our uh, students. Uh, so this is another uh, aspect of digital games. 
And then Morphe uh, in 2020, uh, uh, 11 states laws of learning. So these laws of learning which are also applied to uh, digital games. So there are six laws uh, which are stated. Law of readiness. So student has to be ready to take that game. Like there is, uh, we have to have some previous knowledge also to uh, to to uh, to get engaged with a particular concept, so that is called uh, readiness, and that readiness also uh, includes our physical, emotional, mental, and educational. I have already mentioned readiness, so we have to be ready for uh, that. And uh, games also uh, have the same uh, connotation that when we are. Uh, ready have a certain kind of readiness then only we can smoothly uh, get engaged with the game then law of exercise so we have to uh, practice a certain tasks to attain uh, the learning goal or learning objective so so that so for that we practice again and again and gaming also has this element of uh, practicing then law of uh, effect. So we uh, also have to get emotionally prepared or engaged with the uh, learning tasks to attain it in a, a specific uh, manner. So that is another uh, aspect uh, to it. And it leads us to better involvement with the learning task. And when we are better involved with the learning task, it leads to intensity of experiences which is the next law law of intensity and that intensity leads to immersion so when we get intensely engaged with a learning task we get immersed to the specific learning task which is in the form of a uh, game then a law of primacy, what um, is uh, of uh, prime importance as uh, uh, at a particular uh, point of time can also be taken into account. And then law of recency, it uh, is uh, based on the uh, premise that if we know the previously done task better we have mastery in it then only we can engage better in the recent uh, tasks so these are uh, six uh, laws of learning which are also applied in the uh, game and principles of learning as we discussed in the previous slide are also uh, involved or integrated in the uh, digital games so uh, that is all about uh, uh, that, uh, Tanvi. Okay. Yeah. So uh, these were the laws of learning and mm -hmm. uh, Nam explained each and every one. So let's uh, go further and uh, we would like to ask Ma'am some mm -hmm. examples of these digital games uh, no, yeah. to have a better experience. Yeah. Uh, generally, uh, it is a notion that mm -hmm. games can be uh, mm, uh, created or developed by some uh, professionals mm. but uh, it is not the fact games can be created by uh, teachers as well there are very easy to handle uh, softwares mm. using which we can create uh, interesting digital games for our learners so h5p is one such uh, software so uh, we can also create html based games and lumi is another uh, uh, the software using which we can create, we can use different libraries of H5P software and create interesting games. So uh, CIT, uh, we have uh, created a lot of such digital games in-house at uh, CIT and CRT and while having our workshops with, with the uh, teachers uh, we also orient them in e-content development and development of game is important component of all uh, such workshops which we do here at CIT. And I think many of our viewers have already 
done uh, these workshops with us and we have oriented them into development of um, uh, digital games using such uh, easy softwares. Uh, uh, softwares. So um, we have a website during the time of India Toy Fair. We uh, have uh, created a website where we showcased all the digital games uh, developed by CIT. And all these digital games are also aligned with uh, particular uh, learning uh, uh, outcomes aligned to uh, 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 which are uh, developed for foundational literacy and numeracy and also for secondary and senior uh, secondary classes. So uh, on Diksha, all uh, the textbooks which are available are energized textbooks which are QR coded and the uh, resources aligned which are uh, related to specific chapters are aligned to those uh, QR codes. So all these digital games are also aligned to the QR codes which are there in the textbooks. But, but for e, uh, the purpose of ease of access, I will uh, show here the uh, uh, website which we created for India Toy Fair so that we get all the games at a uh, one place which are uh, curated as per the new curricular and pedagogical structure which is uh, uh, recommended in NEP uh, 2020 like uh, foundational stage, preparatory, preparatory stage, foundational stage, uh, secondary and uh, uh, senior secondary, middle and uh, secondary. So like that we have aligned. So let me take you through uh, the website. So if I uh, click on to this link, we will get on to the website. So here you can see this website. So here in the section, you can see here a section which uh, uh, is uh, games and then there is a section which is ebooks. So there are gamified ebooks also. So I will showcase one. Uh, ebook also here. So you can see here how uh, this is uh, are categorized, games are categorized, foundational, preparatory, middle, secondary uh, and there are miscellaneous games as well. So let me start with foundational. So here we have games uh, for the subject of maths and English. So let me um, click on maths first. So here you can see a game which is about classification. The uh, topic is classification. If we observe the fruits, can we put them in four baskets on the basis of their color? Let us try and put them into four groups. Drag fruits to the basket to form the four groups. So uh, here uh, you can see uh, fruits of four different colors and baskets of four different colors. And uh, to classify uh, these fruits on the basis of colors, we have to drag these uh, fruits in the baskets of that particular color. So here, if I am placing green apple in green basket, it will stay there. If I am placing it in the red basket, it will bounce back. So like that, we can lead further in uh, the learning of classification. For orange fruits, I can classify them by dragging them onto the orange basket. That's a very interesting learning for the kids, ma'am. Yeah. So, and um, especially the foundational learner enjoys doing uh, such activities. Yes. Yeah. So, uh, ma'am, uh, we have a viewer and he hmm. wants to know this particular website. So, can you uh, just announce it loudly? Yeah. The URL is uh, ITF, ITF, India Toy Fair, ITF, Digital Games dot ncert.org.in. So if you uh, 
use this URL, you will get onto uh, this um, particular website and you get uh, all these games which are aligned to uh, the uh, specific uh, learning of that particular stage. So here you can see uh, another game for class 2 for mathematics and uh, here you can see uh, the, we have to arrange numbers on the ladder in ascending order. So these, we have to start with the smallest number, the smallest number here is? Four. Four. Then? Twelve. Yes. After that, twenty. Twenty-four. Four. Let me uh, pick up a wrong number so it will bounce back. Okay. So what we have to place here? Forty-five. Forty-five. Sorry. Forty-five, then fifty-six. Yes. So, like that, we proceed. The same, uh, the drag and drop principle is applied for uh, descending order as well. So, here we have to start from the top number, and then we have to move uh, further. So, eighty-three is the top number here the biggest number after that 78 yes 78 and then 67 67 so like that we can go on to uh, learning about the specific uh, task and for the feedback i also uh, mentioned about feedback so when we check we will get feedback also we have earned i have earned 3 point here because i attempted 3 numbers only and for the previous game, if I uh, click, I check, so 16 out of 16. This game was for 16 marks and I attained 16. So it gave, gives me instant feedback also. Then there is another game you can see here. This is for addition, and uh, just a moment. Yes, so we have to put the numbers in the basket. which uh, the sum of which is uh, 10. Hmm. So you can see a basket here, basket uh, here and the balloons which are containing some uh, numbers. We have to add the number. 5 plus 5 is 10. Yes. So if I uh, place this balloon in the basket, then what is another number, Tanvi? 9 plus 1. 9 plus 1. This blue balloon I have to put in the basket. Yes, ma'am. Then? Then 4 plus 6, the first balloon. No, in 4 blue. plus uh, six. 6. The first yeah, yeah, balloon. yellow balloon. Yes, ma'am. So, yellow balloon. Then? Then uh, the purple one, 7 plus 3. 7 plus 3 is 10. Yeah. So, I can place it here. Then 8 plus 2. Yes, ma'am. Can also be placed here in the basket. Okay. Then 6 plus 4. Yes, ma'am. Then 7 plus 6, no, that will be wrong. So let me place it as well. So it will bounce back. Then 9 plus 1. Again 10. And 8, 2 plus 8. So if we click on to the check button, so I will get instant feedback on my learning. So. 8 out of 9 points I have secured because I put one wrong balloon in the basket. 
Is it not Tanvi? Yes. He placed Tanvi. a wrong balloon also. <laughs> yeah. So then uh, there is another game mm, here. Ma'am, uh, hmm. we have a question here yeah. uh, by one of our viewers and hmm. uh, he's asking, is hmm. this under open source license? Yes. Uh, whatever content we are developing at CIT uh, is shared by uh, CC by NCSA. So uh, uh, we are not allowing commercial use of any content that we have developed, but you can download it for free, use it for free. Uh, if you want to customize it, you can also customize it, but commercial use is uh, not uh, allowed. So we are releasing all our content from Creative Commons licensing, which is very liberal. So uh, that is the uh, licensing we are sharing our content with. Okay. So all our uh, contents are for free for the users. Okay. And ma'am, anyone can contribute to this website? Uh, yes, uh, you can uh, share uh, the games created by you. So we have a, a review committee at uh, CIET. So whatever content uh, one wants to share, they can share, but they are uh, then uh, the, the content share are then reviewed by a committee which is there uh, at CIET. So if the uh, content shared is uh, found appropriate, so uh, they, they, they are uploaded on CIT and credits are also given. Okay. And yeah. ma'am, one of our viewers wants to know that how can they make such games? Uh, so maybe in the course of workshop, you will be uh, some tools, uh, you will get demonstration of some uh, tools for uh, developing these uh, digital games. And also we have a, a series on, uh, a series of uh, live sessions on uh, uh, yeah, digital software and digital tools. Uh, you can go on to CIET's uh, page. So, uh, and uh, you, you, you will get all those demonstrations there. So, you will get every demonstration there. You can go back to our website. Uh, just look at the title of each presentation or demonstration. Whatever software you want to learn, you can uh, learn all those software. So, there, there are a lot of videos there. And you can also keep watching our pro programs where all such demonstrations are given. So like that, you can learn about uh, developing games using uh, these uh, different tools and softwares. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And there's one more question, ma'am. Uh, mm -hmm. The viewer is named as Vivek Samania. And though okay. you began with the same thing that uh, it's a myth mm -hmm. that it be uh, the student becomes addicted mm -hmm. towards these games, but it is not. Mm -hmm. So uh, the same question he's asking that mm -hmm. how can we protect our kids from get getting addictive? Yeah, so, uh, mm, uh, yes, uh, nowadays when it comes to uh, the uh, kind of games which are available uh, in uh, the uh, Play Store and also available through CD, DVDs which uh, children buy and play. So all such games, commercial, uh, commercially uh, sold games are addictive is in nature because the purpose of all those developers, game developers, is to get more and more users to earn uh, profit. So we have to, as parents and as teachers also, we have to check what our students are uh, doing, what they are uh, doing uh, in the virtual environment, which uh, they, 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 we cannot refrain them from uh, being, but we have to keep check. We have to manage their screen time. We also have to check what kind of games they are playing. If they are playing some anti, there are a lot of anti uh, social games also where there is a lot of violence and there is a lot of abusive content which is uh, shown. So we have to check what our children are downloading and uh, playing and we have to uh, just protect them from uh, yeah, playing all those games and we have to channelize their energies to more uh, the, the positive tasks, positive types of uh, games. So that is why uh, integration of games is learning is very, very important so that they get immersed with the learning tasks and not uh, addicted 
to the uh, any random game which are available, which are not leading them to anywhere, but uh, they, 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 they pose a lot of dangers to them. And also, um, uh, there, there, there is a mention in NEP 2020 that uh, more and more serious games need to be developed by the game uh, developers. So that is one of the recommendation on a, of NEP 2020. As game developers also, we have to uh, be very, very careful where we are heading our future generation uh, towards. So we need to develop more and more pro-social game to protect, uh, to, to, to protect our future generation from getting addicted and, uh, and to lead them to indulge with the more positive kind of games. Okay, all right. So I hope Vivek, you have got your answer that uh, how you need to protect your kids from getting addictive. So um, ma'am, we have one more question. The examples we just saw, uh, mm -hmm. the games, they were of maths subject. Mm -hmm. So uh, similarly, uh, one of our viewers and he is Gautam Urankar, he is asking mm -hmm. that how best this game based learning mm -hmm. can be used in teaching specific topics like mm -hmm. physics or chemistry. Uh -huh. So, I uh, just uh, showcased a part of uh, this website. So, yeah. there are games uh, for secondary and senior secondary also, mm -hmm. uh, which are available. So, gaming, uh, ga game based learning can be applied to uh, any subject. So, if you explore Diksha uh, and the textbooks of uh, 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 math uh, of uh, chemistry and physics. So you will get games aligned to those uh, subjects also. And there are a lot of concepts in physics and chemistry, though it is not my uh, subject. So I cannot uh, uh, give uh, the example which uh, uh, much uh, authority, but uh, I, I can mention a few examples. Like uh, in physics, we uh, learn about uh, the uh, different systems which are there in the universe, solar system uh, and, uh, and all such uh, systems, uh, the galaxies out there, how Earth is formulated. Uh, so uh, all uh, such concepts are very, very abstract uh, concepts. So the uh, game based learning can be best suited when we are dealing with some abstract concept which cannot be visualized by our uh, naked eyes. So here comes the element of gamification. So there are a lot of apps which are available which uh, uh, gives us a near to real image of this universe, different uh, systems which exist in the universe like solar system, different planets um, and all and uh, for chemistry also and for that matter I would also like to mention here that uh, as far as uh, gamifying a particular concept is concerned, uh, virtual reality and augmented reality are uh, uh, two solution, two kind of uh, content which can be uh, explored to deal with all such abstract concepts which are there in physics also, chemistry also and they are in abundance in uh, the, the social sciences also. There are a lot of concepts because history is all about past uh, and we, we, uh, we, we, re we can recreate that past through uh, uh, the, some kind of concretization of all those uh, uh, concepts. So, uh, uh, yeah, I was talking about virtual reality and augmented reality. So, if we, you uh, see uh, our textbooks of class 9th and 10th, the uh, abstract concepts which are there uh, in science and mathematics and the images also which we tried to explain uh, by some images. So, all those uh, uh, images are enhanced by using the solution of augmented reality and virtual reality and we can get a 3D visualization of all such uh, concepts. So that initiative has already been started uh, by uh, CIET and CRT and uh, a lot of abstract concepts have been concretized by using uh, augmented reality and virtual reality solutions. 
Okay. Yeah. Now we have uh, a lot of questions uh, from our viewers. They have got a lot of uh, doubts and they mm -hmm. want to clarify a few things. Mm -hmm. So we have uh, one viewer with us and she is Zarina J.M. She is okay. saying that in many rural areas where there is internet connection problem, mm -hmm. so can we play these games offline as well? Uh, yes. Uh, if you are talking about the games which are placed here on the website, they mm -hmm. can be uh, played when internet connectivity is there. Okay. But there are a lot of offline uh, solutions also where we can download a particular app uh, mm -hmm. in our mobile device which contains uh, educational uh, games and then uh, once uh, one time internet is required when we are downloading that okay. and after downloading that uh, particular uh, game app we can use it offline to play all those games so okay yeah. okay so as arena yes there are certain options where you can play these games offline as well you need to search and uh, mm -hmm. download them um, next question, let's take up from it. Uh, for yes. that question only, I want to add one more thing. Yes, uh, because all these games I have mentioned are available on Deeksha portal as well. And we are into uh, developing this Deeksha portal as an offline uh, portal also. Mm -hmm. So when it is available offline, so maybe then we can get all these uh, games available offline as well. Okay, so yeah. that soon will be an option with them. Yes. Okay. Uh, ma'am, our next question is from Siddha Raju, sir, mm -hmm. and uh, he is asking, ma'am, are there any games uh, to be played in regional languages? Is there any such website uh, which can give them their language? Uh, as I have already mentioned that whatever we are developing, they are uh, for, uh, they, they, they are uh, disseminated under a very liberal uh, licensing policy. So you can download all these games and you can customize them in uh, your uh, uh, regional languages. So that option is there. Once you are acquainted with the uh, software on which these games are developed, so you can customize them into your regional languages. So that option is there. But uh, as of now, CEIET and CRT is developing uh, these games in uh, two languages and that is English and Hindi. So maybe we will also customize them in Urdu as far as uh, language games are uh, concerned. But uh, we uh, develop content in three languages as NCRT, Hindi, English and Urdu. And when Sanskrit language is there, so Sanskrit language is also being used. But all the users out there, they can uh, just customize them. They are free to customize them in regional languages. Okay. And there may be a lot of websites if you explore online, if you Google in uh, which con which may might be containing games in regional languages as well. Yes. Okay. All right. Um, mm -hmm. So uh, that option is also in their hands. They can mm -hmm. always translate. Ma'am, we have got. Uh, um, the query is the same, but it has been asked by multiple people. Hmm. Uh, Mini Nair and uh, Ashlina D'Souza, they are both asking that are these games mobile friendly? Uh, mm, yeah. uh, as of now, the Diksha portal is not uh, mobile responsive. We are into developing a uh, Diksha portal uh, in the form of a mobile app also so when and which is evolving we have recently started this initiative so when uh, that uh, the diksha portal will be available uh, in the form of an app also the uh, which is available but it is uh, constantly being evolved so uh, all those games which are aligned to uh, the textbooks which are available on Diksha can be uh, get through mobile as well. But this website which I have shown is not mobile responsive, but that's a good suggestion. We will make this website mobile responsive so that you can get all these games on mobile as well. Okay. 
Um, um, let's take the next query and this is by J. Anthony Santa Seelan. Mm -hmm. I hope I'm pronouncing it right. So uh, the person, I think uh, as a parent, he's asking this mm -hmm. question that uh, this game-based learning, uh, is it a possibility that uh, this can be a distraction uh, for students from studies? Uh, game-based learning. If we call it game-based learning, that means it leads to curricular learning. So how can it distract students from, uh, from the studies because the games are aligned to curriculum only and they are achieving some curricular goal or some learning outcome using all these games. So maybe uh, we can take some questions later. Let me explain them by using a few more games so that that doubt is clarified Cleared. by a demonstration. A few games I have already demonstrated. To learn classification, students are playing a game. They are classifying apple, fruits on the basis of colors. Mm -hmm. So that is leading, that game is leading to attaining the learning outcomes of making student proficient in classification. Then another game was on ascending and descending it was also aligned to learning outcome yes achieving a learning ob objective another game was for addition which i uh, just now demonstrated hmm. uh, for maths maths so how can they uh, lead to deviate them for studies they hmm. are learning addition they are learning uh, arranging for a number in ascending and descending order they are hmm. learning classification hmm. So, it's uh, just a new yeah. way of learning. New way of learning and uh, and uh, that is that too in a joyful manner yes. which children enjoy. Yes. If you teach them addition hmm. by using paper and pencil, that is also one of the way. There are various way of arriving or attaining a learning objective. Hmm. Paper, pencil is one of the ways but if it is uh, boosted uh, by using some digital games also, so they will get indulged with the uh, learning uh, objective and attainment will be easier and in a joyful manner. So Absolutely. that is the purpose of having uh, Absolutely. these digital games. So we have got last five minutes left, ma'am. Would you mm -hmm. like to show us some more games? Uh, uh, I, right now I have just uh, mentioned on the, uh, yeah, demonstrated on the games for mathematics. They can explore the website on their own. I would like to show them a, a digital uh, book, interactive digital book, okay. uh, where games are embedded in the textbook itself. Okay. So I will show a book uh, here. So, yeah. So there is a section. Ebooks. So there are four ebooks here. Here. So I will show you one of the interactive textbook. So you can see here, it's a, a Hindi book um, uh, on history that is for, uh, yeah, it's a bridge course for Kasturba Gandhi Vidyale, Balika Vidyale. So it is a flip book. So you can see here, yeah, some audios are there with the book. So if I play here. audio is based on based on this poem which is on a, a historical concept then there is another audio so audio can be embedded audio is embedded so element of gamification is integrated with the textbooks here you can see a quiz is there
so my answer is wrong I can try again do you want to play it again if I click on to yes I can play the quiz again so quiz is another uh, component which is added then there are more audios here is a video also so you can play the video in the book itself then quizzes so like that the element of gamification is also added in the textbooks okay so uh, this is actually an interactive ebook just like ma'am showed there are videos there are audios there are quizzes so um, you can uh, have a look at this interactive ebook it's uh, available on the website i'll repeat the website once again it's itf digitalgames.ncert.org.in many of our uh, viewers they are asking about the same website many queries you have in your mind please uh, use this website log it uh, in and then explore it yourself to understand and to get into its depth thank you so much ma'am uh, for this entire thank discussion <laughs> it was a lovely time thank you thank you so much Thank you for all the viewers for participating in this uh, entire program and uh, I'm sure that you've enjoyed it by the response we were getting. We can understand that you are excited and this is a five day training. Today is only the second day. So let me tell you about this training in detail. All you have to do is uh, type CIET in your Google and then you'll get this website. So have a look here and uh, when you get this website, just choose the option events and the third last option is workshop slash training if you click here and scroll it down a little bit this is the current activity online training on game based learning click on this link and this is everything you know uh, want to know about this online training this is the schedule details tomorrow we'll deal with the topic exploring digital games for learning and all the topics are mentioned here till 24th of june the objectives who all can participate this is the schedule and it will be updated with each day and this is how you can participate either click on the link and uh, be a part or scan this qr code so everything is mentioned here especially this post session quiz link this will be updated on 24th of june that is friday so wait for it and explore this website too so for now we're wrapping up this program but uh, tomorrow we'll come back again same time same topic and uh, that will be the third day so for now we're wrapping up and uh, the next program we are coming up with is sayog and the topic of discussion would be social media and adolescence mental health stay here ask your questions we are open to all your queries thank you once again take care namaskar <laughs>